Hello and welcome to another Science Vision video. Now in this video we're looking at the topic of biological molecules. Now in order to maintain a healthy body we need to eat the right amount of food and also the right types of food. Now our diet, and here we're not talking here about just a weight loss diet, you can have weight gain diet, you can have weight maintenance diet, a weight loss diet, but whatever the diet is it needs to contain sufficient and balanced quantities of carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Okay, let's look now at each of these types in turn. First of all, carbohydrates. Now, as the name suggests, let's break the name down, shall we? First of all, the carbo bit means carbon. The hydro bit here means hydrogen. ATE in any um, biological or chemical molecule, for that matter, you see the ending ATE, it means there's oxygen present. So, in a carbohydrate, we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Example here is glucose, and that's got six carbons, 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. Right, let's look at some of the functions and uses, shall we? First of all, sugar. Now sugar, um, now where they found where different foods contain different kinds of sugar. For example, fruit contains fructose, which is a sugar, or glucose. Lactose is another sugar found in milk, and stuff you're used to put in your tea or coffee is called sucrose. And why do we need it? Well, sugar gives us energy, so we tend to call it an energy food. Another form we take in, in um, carbohydrates is starch. Now starch is found in foods such as bread, potatoes, cereals, pasta, rice and so on. And what it is basically is a storage molecule. We don't store it as starch, we'll come on to this later video, but we do store it and it provides us with energy. Lastly, cellulose. Now cellulose is found in plant cell walls. We don't contain cellulose and we don't have the enzymes to digest it, but it's found in plant cell walls and what it is, it's a structural molecule that supports the plant cell and stops it from collapsing. Okay, That's carbohydrates. Let's go on now to fats. Now fats, they also contain those three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. But compared to carbohydrates, they contain relatively less oxygen. They occur in both plant and animal foods. The difference between fats and oils is fats are solid at room temperature. Oils are liquid. So about 20 degrees Celsius, oils are liquid, fats are solid. That's all the difference is. Now, fats also give us energy. They're a good energy source. They're harder to release than carbohydrates, but they are energy stores. And also, they provide us with insulation around vital organs under the skin in us, other mammals. And they say they are energy stores. So, you can, on a long trek, you start using all those energy from fat stores. Next one we've got is proteins. Now, proteins contain, again, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Also contain nitrogen because we'll see shortly they're made of amino acids and there's the nitrogen there that makes the amino acids and in a couple of amino acids there is sulfur. Proteins are found in milk, eggs, meat and fish. What are they for? Well, you've already been told this many, many times that proteins are needed for growth and bodybuilding, that means muscles and skin, and also used to make enzymes to help break down other chemicals. Let's think now about the building blocks. So if these are the building blocks and these are the finished products here. So let's think first of all about carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates consist of simple sugars. Now when they combine, when carbohydrates combine, they form starch and glycogen. So starch and glycogen are chains of simple sugars. Fatty acids and glycerol are the building blocks of fats and oils. So if these are fatty acids or glycerol. They combine together to form fats and oils in chains. And as we just mentioned, proteins are made up of amino acids. Okay, so proteins there are made up of amino acids. Right now, how can we tell if these molecules are present in a food sample? Well, we can do some food tests. You need to know your food tests are well worth taking a bit of time on this. First of all, how do we test for glucose? Well, glucose is called a reducing sugar, and for that we need Benedict's test. And to carry out the test, what we do, we have a test tube here, boiling tube. In there, you've got the suspected carbohydrate and also Benedict's. Now, Benedict's is blue. You can't heat this directly. You have to put it in what's called a water bath. So here's a hot water bath here. You put your solution in there. Now, if there is glucose present in this here, the solution will change from blue to green to yellow to orange and finally to brick red. So those are the colour changes you expect. A positive result, Benedict's would go from blue to brick red if glucose is present. Okay, got that? Good, let's move on. 
starch. Now starch, for starch, we test for starch using something called iodine. Iodine. Now, iodine is normally a yellowy brown colour, but if you add it to starch it goes bluey black. So the positive result there for starch is a blue black colour. Mentioned a bit earlier about these things called enzymes. Now enzymes are biological catalysts. They speed up the rate of chemical reactions going on inside living things. Now what are the features of enzymes? Let's look at these now, shall we? First of all, they're what we call globular proteins. Every enzyme has an area called an active site that I'll mention in a moment. They're specific. That means that one enzyme is responsible for one reaction. Enzymes are affected by both temperature and also pH. Now naming enzymes commonly named by adding the ending ASE to the substrate molecule being acted upon. For example, sucrase works on sucrose. Lipase works on lipose. You can see all we've done here is change the ending. This is the enzyme, ASE. This is a substrate, in this case sucrose. This is the enzyme, ASE, lipase. Here's a substrate, lipose. Now, we've got a few enzymes that don't follow this, this rule, but have their own common names. For example, pepsin is an enzyme, and so is trypsin. So they don't follow the ASC rule, but most do. OK, this is what's happening in a reaction. A substrate, for example, um, sucrose, will be acted upon by an enzyme, for example, sucrase, okay, to produce the product, glucose plus fructose. So, substrate, enzyme, products. Now let's go back to that binding site, but the active site. Now all enzymes have what's called an active site or binding site, and it's this to which the substrate binds. Now you can see here, here are two substrates. They're all they are, but they're just two substrates. Now only one of those will fit in there. Now it's obvious which one it's going to be. So you can see there that this substrate here fits into this enzyme and this one won't. That's why enzymes are very specific, because it's binding site. Right, let's look at um, the effect of enzymes and temperature. Now here we've got um, a little experiment, and what happened here, the experiment was carried out to investigate how temperature affects the rate at which enzyme converts starch into sugar. Now down here we've got temperature, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, along here the time. Now you can see here that where it is black, it means there's still starch present. Where it is yellow, it means all the starch has been broken down. Okay? The results shown in this table. A black circle means there's still starch present. An orange means no starch present at all. As you can see here at 10 degrees Celsius, okay, at 50 minutes, there was still starch present. Whereas at 40 degrees Celsius, by 30 minutes, there's no starch present at all. So, here's a little task for you. This is what I want you to do. A bit of exercise. I want you to, first of all, put the results in the table. So, for example, time taken start to disappear minutes. Ten minutes it was, well, 60, isn't it? 60. You put 60 there. At 20 minutes it would be 50, and so on. Okay? Now, plot a graph with temperature along the x-axis. Remember, x goes across, and time the y-axis. That goes up. Draw the graph, please. Then, what can you conclude from this investigation? How does temperature affect the action of enzymes? You come across a term um, in biology called denaturing. So, a little bit of homework. Find out what does denature mean and how would it apply to this investigation. Okay, so get cracking, get on with it, and draw yourself a graph. Right, well, thanks for watching this science video. For more of my free videos, please visit my site at www.sciencerevisionvideo.com. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll be back again very soon.